Who said anything about you going through with it? What? 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 Hey Internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to Seduce Me To The Demon War and we're with Sam again and his storyline is getting fucking crazy because all of a sudden there's fucking dragons out of nowhere and apparently I was wrong. It wasn't Morgan Freeman, it was Smog. So, there's that and um, we trained with Sergeant and things got really intense between him and Diana, and then there was smut last episode, and that was fucking great. I was, it was amazing. I get the handlebar reference now. <laughs> but aside from that stuff, uh, the dragon that was talking to us said that we were going to be tested along with Sam, and apparently it's tonight. So, I'm really afraid of what's going to happen, because I might pick the wrong thing here and fuck everything up, and then whatever we saw in the nightmare might come true. Because that's probably what's going to happen to me. Anyway, let's find out! As I marched back to my room, I was stopped by Sam. I stared at him as he leaned against the door of our room, as if he had been waiting me for a while. Hey. Hey. I knew this could only mean one thing. My test was waiting for me. I pressed my lips together, nervous, but knowing that I had to go through it regardless of how I felt, Diana's words began to flood back into my mind as I took Sam's hand and gave it a squeeze. Sam squeezed my hand back, nodding and led me away from our led me away from our bedroom towards the war room, where Diana was waiting for us. Diana mentioned that we have to, uh, our love for Sam is going to have a play in it, so wonder how this is going to go. As Diana locked her sights on us, she leaned on the side and gestured to the table with a large collaborate god damn it, collaborate <laughs> items were placed and presented. Sam halted his stop staring at the table in absolute shock. I, however, merely grew confused. On the table were assortment of single flowers of each of them a different color and type. They were formed in a magic circle pattern, but there was no magic being seen. When did you- What's happening? Hush, this is for her. Sa Sam instantly shut his mouth as I looked to Sam in confusion. He knew what this was? I turned to Diana completely lost. Dear, do you know what I've prepared here? No, you put flowers everywhere. Are you like- are you just giving me flowers? Please tell me that's all you're doing? <laughs> I stared at the table, unsure how to discern it. A couple of ideas came to mind, but I didn't want to be wrong if this was part of a test. Sam knew what it was, too, given the strong reaction from it. Could have been- Oh, is it the demon marriage ritual? Oh, fuck! Let's ask that! Because it probably is, right? Because, um, Smog the dragon has been living in our mind, like, monitoring us for a while now, so I assume he knows what Sam wants. That was it. It had to be it. Why else would Sam re react so strangely? It had been on his mind, and now it's staring me dead in the face. Diana nodded, gesturing to the flowers. This is a marriage ritual. Freshly blossomed flowers, holding peak-worthy magical essence, arranged in a magic circle are part of what a binding ritual needs to happen. Look this strawberry. Sorry, I don't know what I'm eating right now. Part? Diana nodded and looked at the table. The other part is a precious item forged between two souls to bind them together. I couldn't believe it. This was my test? There was no way I was ready for this, but here I was, staring at the setup that just screamed, go through with it. Part of me was angry and aggravated. I had to go through this and for some stupid dragon's power. This was something Sam and I were supposed to discuss together. Now it felt like an arranged agreement. That is true. That's kind of fucked up that the dragon is just like, oh, let's test them out with a marriage, you know, binding their souls, even though it's between me and Sam. So, fuck you, dragon. What was I going to do? The test was obviously going to make me go through with this for the sake of Sam, but I still wasn't ready. Soul binding seemed very heavy, and as much as I love Sam, I need to be the 100% clear. Sam stepped forward and glared at Diana. We're not doing this. What? Pardon? You heard me. We're not going through with this. I stared at Sam wide-eyed. What? He didn't want to go through with it anymore? What was going on? I remember clearly that he wanted to do it, now he was against it? Sam looked to me and I could suddenly see the reason why buried in his eyes. He still wanted to, but not like this. I could tell that he was throwing away something- I could tell that he was throwing away something he desperately wanted for my own sake. Aww, what a sweetheart. Sam? Sam turned and grasped my shoulder, staring into my eyes. I know that I want to do this. I want to do this more than anything. But you are more important to me than some dumb ritual. Oh, sweetheart. I will never let you force yourself to make this decision if you're nowhere near ready. 
That that makes Sam a good oh, All right? That makes Sam a very good fiance and a good person to do that. I felt like crying. This was exactly why I loved him. One of the this is one of the million reasons why Sam was important to me. My heart felt at ease looking at his eyes and letting the ro the rogue tears roll down my cheeks. It may have seemed like a simple thing, but to me this was important. I gently caressed Sam's cheek, feeling the warmth of his skin beneath my hand, and thanking every deity I knew that I had him beside me as mine. However, as Diana cleared her throat, we both turned to her reaction to her in reaction. What really threw us off was seeing her cover her mouth, hiding some sort of smirk that was peeking out between her fingers. Who said anything about you going through with it? What? 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 Oh my god, what is happening? Sam and I become dumbfounded. What? We didn't have to go through with it, then why was it set up? For fuck's sake, if you're messing with us. Diana began to laugh hysterically, causing Sam to stop talking and become dumbfounded once again. What the hell is going on? <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> what? What the fuck, Diana? As beyond lost, as Diana continued to laugh, she curled over her stomach and covered her face, trying to catch her breath. This was perfect! This was absolutely perfect! Diana? Now I became frustrated. What was so funny about this? Diana finally stopped laughing, wiping her eyes from her tears that she had formed from laughing so hard, and grimaced at me and Sam. I didn't set this up to make you two do it. That would ruin the point of the test. Then what is the test? I became flustered, now mentally scrambling as to what was going on. As my body suddenly began to sink into the ground, however, I grasped and I grasped and looked down to see a large purple pentagram pulling me and Sam into the floor. Whoa! Oh fuck! Is this the thing that we saw? Oh no! I'm gonna- oh, we're gonna die. Oh, we're gonna Demon die. Demon marriage lets you know where your soul partner is at all times. The test is that you find your husband without it. Oh my god, what the fuck is wrong with this dragon, man? What the f- I couldn't even fight back as I was engulfed in the dark- by the darkness at last. I couldn't tell how long I was trapped in the darkness. All I knew is that I woke- I was going to wake up and find Sam. As I opened my eyes, I had to adjust to the bright light around me and the sound of the nature in, in my ears. I rubbed my eyes and found myself in the forest, laying underneath a large tree with burnt marks across its bark. I could tell this was my starting place and my marker if I got lost, so while I felt terrible for the tree, I was thankful that I had something visual reference. So, this was my test. I had to find the man I love without anything but my heart and my instincts. This was cheesy as hell, expecting someone to find someone else using the power of love. Yeah, that's kind of corny. <laughs> I love Sam deeply, but I didn't know if I would be- I don't know if it would be strong enough to guide me through the terrain I was unaware of to Sam. Who could have been wandering around looking for me? There were so many variables to consider. This still was a test for a reason, so I had to figure it out. I cupped my hands together and shouted, knowing that his name would be the only way to bring him up to me. Okay, I don't think shouting Omaris is gonna work because we're in the Abyssal Plains right now, right? That's not true. Diana did summon Seto in, with Eric's route, so I don't think it's gonna work here, though. The nearby birds around me fluttered wildly into the air in surprise of my shout, but Sam didn't appear. What the hell? That was supposed to have worked. Something must have happened under holy magic, Seto. Or something to... To negate the d demon summoning. Another part of the test. Guess I wasn't allowed to cheat. It was worth a try. Okay, let's calm down first. I don't think it's smart to be like freaking out in this situation. So let's calm down. I had to be methodically about this. There was no use in panicking over the situation. The forest can be that big, could it? <laughs> it probably is. Probably is. I shook my head. No. Nope. I had to find it if it was the last thing I do. This is the only way I was going to get the dragon's power. And uh, as difficult and unnecessary as it was, it's true. This is completely unnecessary. <laughs> I took in a breath and looked around, trying to decide where to start. I started to head to the left of the tree's burn marks. There were no better directions at all than to start. Each step became filled with haste. I wanted to find Sam soon. I didn't want to laze about this. I felt like hours went by until I stopped and looked around, exhausted from walking so far at a such fast pace. I leaned against a nearby tree, catching my breath. How the hell am I going to find him? Something in my heart began to feel heavy. What if I was na not able to find him? What if this was an impossible quest? I felt my body slide down to the- I felt my body slide down the side of the tree, making me sit down on the base of in fear. This couldn't be. Sadness and ache began to consume my thoughts. There were no way to track him, no way to find him at all. And in this place, I'd be searching forever, only hoping that I would find him and pray that he was alive when I did. 
My hands come through my hair as I fought back the tears. Please let me wake up if this is a dream. Please let me see him again. Giving up so soon, my dear? Well, Diana, do you blame me? This is fucking sad. What the hell? At Diana's voice, I suddenly, I suddenly gasped and looked up, only to find no one around. I quickly stood and scanned the area, but alas, there was only trees around. Diana, I don't know what to do. How can I find him? You have all of the means to find him. You're just not thinking it through. Okay, if you also remember in the nightmare, Diana was there. It's possible that Sam will be engulfed in flames right now. I'm really scared. <sighs> I looked in the air, confused as ever. What does she mean? I didn't have anything but what clothes I was wearing. Diana chuckled slightly. Think. Besides his heart, what else did he give you as a token of his love? His dick? <laughs> that was a terrible joke, I'm sorry. As she said it, the answer came to mind. Playing the night Sam proposed to me in the night sky. Oh, the ring! I looked to my hand, seeing the engagement ring Sam had given me, resting on my finger, blissing in the light. <laughs> there we are. The other part of the marriage ritual. Second part? This was... Indeed. It seems he intended to ask you to be his in body, heart, and spirit. My heart gave a hard and heated thump against my chest, agreeing with Diana's words. He had been prepared all along to ask to ask me to be his, but wanted to at least give me what I wanted first before asking what he wanted. Oh, what a sweetheart! I can't take it, so it was so cute. I smiled, staring at the sparkling emeralds and the diamond on my ring, finally feeling the magic pulse within it. Still, I was lost on how to use it. How will this help me? Diana chuckled once more. Her, vo her voice quieter than before. I can't give you all of the answers, dear. But at least you won't be lost anymore. Okay. Her voice finally vanished into the air, leaving me alone at once. However, my focus was on my ring. I remember clearly that this wasn't an ordinary ring, but one magical forge in the night Sam proposed. Sam, I'm going to find you. I nodded and I felt a wave of hope and courage rush through my body. I was ready now. I was focused on the ring, trying to will it to give me a sign, a hint, anything to help me find Sam. I stared at it, a word popped into my mind, letting it loose. I could feel magic pulse in the air around my body. Omar? My hands suddenly became wrapped in a green chain-shaped marking, spreading from the base of my ring. Before jutting off of my skin and flying towards the air and deeper into the forest, I felt myself grin to ear to ear. I was going to find him. I clearly burst into a sprint, following the thrill and thrill and thrill a bleh <laughs> chain that was leading me towards Sam. Uncanny of the harsh, harsh breath that I was taking or the pain that shot through my legs. I needed to keep going forward. All that mattered was that I had to move, I had to keep moving forward. The chain twisted and turned around the trees and often arched around the obstacle for me, guiding me perfectly towards a thicker bush of woods. The amount of bushes and the smaller trees that began to grow farther as I went in, as I, but I continued. Okay. Soon enough, I found myself walking towards a descending mount of cave, where a familiar brown-haired demon boy laid face down in the edge. Sam? I ran towards him and sat on my knees, lifting my, his head into my lap. Around his neck was a golden collar, which upon my touch vanished and caused Sam to stir from his co comatose state. What the <sighs> fuck? My heart began to swell and I stared down at him, tears welling up in my eyes. This was really him. He was safe in my arms and I, had to, and I found him. His emerald gaze bore into my still dazed from the sleep he was in. As he stared up at me, Sam lifted his hand and crossed my cheek, causing me to unconscious unconsciously nuzzle into it. There you are. Boy, you're you're gonna let me kiss you. <laughs> you're gonna let me kiss you. I feel like we need to prove our love here, so. I couldn't help but repeat the wor first words he had ever said to me. They had engraved themselves into my mind, and I forever and I was forever thankful for that day. Sam's lips curved into a smug smile, remembering the phrase perfectly. Then hurry up and do it. What? I grinned and bent down, capturing his lips with my own. My entire body felt completely, felt complete as our lips touched. I didn't care if he took any energy from me in it. I had found him. Well done. To our surprise, the voice didn't ring in our heads. The voice of the dragon echoed from the cave, uh. causing me and Sam to separate and stare into the void. You have proven to me the strength of your heart. Now, for the final test, Sam must prove his. I instantly gripped Sam tighter. We were going to be separated again, were we? Sam, however, slowly stood up, guiding me with him and, a gl and glaring into the darkness. Hit me with your best shot. I'm Hit ready. me with your best shot. What are you copyright, right? 
A dark, echoing chuckle reverberated from the cave, causing a sliver of fear to rush down my body. I was beyond nervous, but we had come this far. We were going to win his powers. Step into the cave and face me. I will judge you. The memories of the, my nightmare began to fill my head. What if it was a trick? What if the dragon killed Sam while he was in there? Despite my frightening thoughts, Sam stepped towards the cave, nodding. Oh god, he's gonna die. You got it. Ah, oh, every voice and nerve in my head screamed for me for me to stop him. I didn't want him to die. At the same time, this was a test. He had to do it. I was placing my heart on the table and hoping it wouldn't be ripped apart with a single blast. Oh my god, what about- I, I need to save again. We saw what we saw in the nightmare. When we went into the cave, Diana said run. And all, everything was on fire, and then fucking Sam burnt, was burnt alive, and then he died. Oh, should I let him do it as a trick? Like, oh god, okay, I'm gonna let him do it. Oh, I'm probably doing the wrong thing. I had to trust him. He could do this. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Okay. I'm okay. I, was watch I watched as Sam walked into the cave, falling behind until he vanished into the darkness. I stood once again between the light and dark, waiting. Waiting. Moments of silence ran by, filling my body with anxiousness. Was he safe? Was he okay? At the sudden shout of the dragon's roar, I jumped and gripped the cave wall, frightened it to my core. It echoed into the silence out of its mouth of the cave, but I became worried. What happened? What was going on? The faint echo of the footsteps began to make their way towards me, despite me not being able to see in the darkness. I hoped it was Sam. I prayed it was Sam on Scath. <gasps> As Sam finally appeared out of the darkness, I, I guess, not seeing him- What the fuck's up with his eyes? Not seeing him at last, but when I saw his eyes- there were swirling with red and green flames along the whites of his eyes while his emerald irises glowed in the shadow of the cave. Just from just from seeing him, I could tell that he had changed and had become much more powerful. Sam? Sam gripped me, stepping up in front of me and placing a hand on my head. Sup, you doofus. Don't. He's fine, right? I bit my lip and shook my head, pounding my fist into his chest before hugging him tightly. Whoa. Hey, it's all right. Jesus Christ. Right here. God damn it. All right. <laughs> Thank God you are. May your battle be won, Lord of Dragons. Holy shit, Sam's a Targaryen. This is so cool. I looked over Sam's shoulder into the darkness, seeing the faint outline of a large dragon head fade away before my eyes. What the? Lord of Dragons? So Sam, the unburnt breaker of chains. What is Daenerys' other title? She has like 5,000. Before Sam could answer me, a light burst into the air, causing us to grip onto each other and shut our eyes. The hell, the warmth of the light seemed to comfort and ease our travel to wherever the dragon was sending us. Regardless, I clung to Sam tightly, desperate not to let go of him. <sighs> okay, when we opened our eyes at last, we were in the war room in the middle of the space with the rebel leaders, the incubi, and their wives staring wide at us. Before anyone could move, however, Diana applauded at us, making everyone turn their heads towards it, her in confusion. Well done, you two. Jesus Christ. Wait, you knew where they were all along? She told us they were gone. She didn't say she didn't know where. Listen, that's rude. <laughs> at least they're safe now. James, however, stepped towards Sam, peering at him. Sam's eyes had returned to normal, but... But I bet his aura was different now that he was Lord of Dragons or whatever the dragon called him. At least you're safe now. You were worried about him too, dude. <laughs> Don't ruin it. He has a reputation. <laughs> He's much stronger than before now. Sam gave James a smug look before holding out his hand. Yeah, I'm alright now. The two brothers shook hands, smiling at one another. I was happy to know that he was alright and well, giving him a squeeze. Diana, however, cleared her throat as the rebel leaders took off, catching everyone's attention. Well, I hate to break up this little reunion, but we have a battle to fight tomorrow. Oh my god, okay. We should rest. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Everyone was in agreement, especially my aching body. The, the run in the forest was not a kind one. Everyone began to leave. However, Diana called out. Sam, a moment please. Alone. What? I was worried about what Diana wanted to speak with Sam about alone, but I left the room with the rest of the group regardless. Diana seemed adamant. However, I remained at the door listening in. So, you got me alone. What do you want? I peeked into the room to see Diana face away from Sam, who had his arms crossed and was waiting for her to speak. Tomorrow is the day we head out to fight him. We've been fighting for ten years, and it will finally end. You're stalling. What is it? Do you know how many lives have been lost because of this war? 
Sam finally lowered his arms and glared back at Diana's head. I glared as well. Why was she bringing this up? From her tone of voice, however, she was she, she seriously wanted an answer. Hundreds? Thousands? Nine and a half million lives. Holy shit, man! Sam's breath hitched, hitched in shock, as did mine. That many lives have been lost? Was this war truly as bloody as the rebel leaders described it to be? Diana turned her head and stared into Sam, to stare into Sam's shocked gaze. I had to send off and watch almost nine and a half million soldiers marching to their deaths. This world lost that many lives and had to take their blood and ashes into its soil as the battles we fought ended. The Demon Lord, however, ravaged and slaughtered thousands of innocent lives in between, sending more people to their deaths just because they were in his way. Why are you telling me this? All of those lives could have been spared. Diana turned around and glared hard at Sam, and to my surprise, Sam froze in place. Every single life that was lost during this war could have lived, could have been leading normal lives. Sam didn't open his mouth. Why wasn't he saying anything? I felt the need to step in, but I stopped by a hand over my mouth. Huh? Shh. Oh, Damien. I looked up to see Damien covering my mouth and staring into the room intently. I didn't understand. Why was he hushing me? I looked back into the room as Diana began to step forward towards Sam. My kingdom became the target of the Demon Lord's wrath, and I came back to the castle and my people screaming to the sky and burning in the flames. Our family! My family was taken away from me, and there is nothing I can do to bring them back. As Diana finally got close to Sam, leaning nose to nose with him, her eyes began to glow a cruel, cold, golden color, making me worry. And it's all because of you, your brothers. And that human. In a way, it is kind of true, not gonna lie. What? <clears throat> Whoa, hey, what? Like lightning, Diana and Sam slammed into the far wall. However, instead of Diana against the wall, Sam was against it with Diana's hand over his mouth. What surprised me the most was Sam staring at Diana with almost shocked and fearful expression. The hell? Sam gripped Diana's arm, but for some reason she didn't seem to be affected by his strength, like he was gripping stone. Where... Did her strength come from? I want to get it through your head that this war is your fault. Yours and that human's fault. My parents, my sister, their lives were ripped away from this world because of you two. My kingdom burned, drowned in the flames of the Demon Lord because of you two. Um, I don't know if anybody's watched my Eric playthrough. Because it explains more about what happened with her family and stuff, but... Um, when I finished the game, the ending was a, was glitched, and after Michaela updated it, I went back and actually looked at it, and holy fuck, is it sad. Like, if, if Diana isn't alive, spoiler alert, if she isn't alive, um, uh, it's really fucking sad, and I can't believe I did that to Cyana. Like, it still upsets me, because what happens to Seto is really fucked up and really sad. Your brothers were too enthralled with the human world to give a damn about where they came from, so I could have never convinced them to come back. You were my only hope, and you decided that the human was more important than the peace of this world. Because of your love for her, you stayed in the human world and caused so much death. Okay, let's keep watching, because I feel like I, I have to trust Damien too, you know what I mean? I want to burn that anger into your soul. Every single life that has been lost in this war to stop the Demon Lord was because of you and your love. Diana's hand slowly moved from Sam's mouth to his collar and gripping it, pulling him up on his toes. However, as they continued to stare at each other, Sam's eyes began to glow bright red and gold color, the mixture swirling in his green irises. This war wasn't. Yes, it was! Diana quickly pulled Sam forward and slammed him back into the wall, causing him to jerk and wince, growling but continuing to stare at Di Diana's angry expression. Around Diana's body was a dark purple aura, flickering like a wildfire with her screams. If I had just killed that human and dragged you back, the world would not be suffering as it is! If that human wasn't alive, then the Demon Lord would not have done what he did! But at the same time, the, the dad's a dick, to begin with. Diana. I understand why she's angry, though, so I can't be that mad at her. If you and your brothers had just stayed, this war would not have happened! We're gonna end it! We will! And when this war is over, I will never have to see you or that damn human ever again! I stared wide as Diana lowered her head down, slightly loosening her grip on Sam's collar. Her back was arched over, twitching and spasming as Sam 
As Diana gritted her teeth. That is why you two must survive. What? Diana's voice weakened immensely, drenched in soft, choking sobs and whimpers. You two need to survive this war. You need to protect her. And stay alive, no matter what. My heart dropped, but my mind was lost. Where was this coming from? I felt Damien, I felt Damien lose his grip over my mouth slightly as I watched Sam straighten up and looked down at Diana. The aura around Diana slowly began to die out with each word Diana choked out. If either of you die, then this war will have happened for nothing. All of those lives, all of this destruction, the only reason we are here is because of you two. Diana. Diana looked up to Sam, a new hopeless pain burning in her eyes, as tears began to stream down her face. Swear to me, brute, that you will take responsibility for this and live, no matter what happens. Damn the war, damn my life! But you must swear that you understand and will take this responsibility. My heart was hurting at the sight of Diana. She looked so broken, barely gripping to Sam and no longer forcing him against the wall behind him. Sam over pressed his lips together. What was he going to do? Sam, staring at Diana's expression, slowly grabbed onto both Diana's horns and pulled Diana's head downward, pressing his forehead on top of her head. I swear. For the first time in my life, I watched Diana crumple to the ground onto the, her knees with, with Sam following her down. Diana's hand released Sam and covered her face before she started sobbing violently into her palms. Sam kept his hands on her horns, pressing his forehead into the top of her head with closed eyes. Round energy from Diana's body slowly began to slide along her form and into Sam's head, slowly wrapping around him and fading away. What? Did he take her en energy? What's going on? I stepped away from the door and looked to Damien, seeing him look down at the ground in shame. Damien? It is our fault, but we can't change the past. We can only end this. I nodded, feeling the weight of the words rest on my soul. In a way, I felt completely responsible for this war even happening. I loved Sam enough to keep him away from his duty, his reason for birth. I had chained him to me, and I wouldn't let him go. I looked back to Diana, seeing her shaking and crying as Sam continued to remain, still holding her horns. The energy had vanished, and all that was left were tears Diana was shedding. Did Sam take her energy? Sam took away her rage. Oh, okay, okay, that makes much more sense. Wait, what? I looked up at Damien, confused. He was an incubus, so he would only be take. Oh, so he would only be able to take away sexual energy, right? He could take other forms of energy too. Sam can do that. Yes, actually. While he's an incubus, he's also part brute demon, just like the rest of us. Oh, cause their their father's a brute, right? I'm surprised. Sam was part brute demon, so were the boys. Damien chuckled softly, assuming, assumingly because he was reading my mind and nodded. Our mothers were succubi. The demon lord, though, he's no incubus. Oh, he's a brute demon. Yeah, I was about to say. He uses rage energy. Okay, that makes more, much more sense. Damien looked into the room, losing part of his smile. Sam, our brothers and I were born incubi, but Sam inherited more brute demon traits than the rest of us. Mm. Thus, why he had the nicknames brute and monster. Because he wasn't like a regular incubus? Damien nodded. I looked to Sam, seeing him stare into Diana's scalp with a focused but intense expression. The more I thought about it, the more I could, I could see what he meant. Sam never got into the idea of taking and using sexual energy. He was angry all of the time in the demon world, so he fed on rage energy instead. Yeah, that sounds like Sam. It wasn't until he went to the human world with us when he began to rely on his incubus powers. I can only imagine it. Sam, who hated his father and was the rebel son of the Incubi brothers, full of anger. That's probably why he was so forward when he met me and full, and full of attitude. Still, I fell in love with him. He was truly a wonderful man. He did everything he could to make me happy and feel safe. He always put me first, which flattered me and made me feel incredibly special. I didn't want, I didn't know what to say to that. Diana eventually stopped crying and wiped her tears from her face, but she didn't raise her head. Damien, whom I thought who would have stayed longer, disappeared. Leave me alone to watch. Sam, if I die, would you? What, would he what? I stared, hoping that Diana would reply with a clearer question, but she merely closed her eyes and let out a small sigh. Suddenly, the noise in the room became silent, and I could see Diana's lips move. Sam's eyes widened as she finished speaking. 
Oh no. Don't pull a fucking Game of Thrones here with fucking Lana Stark and Ned Stark. God damn it. Spe speaking, but he didn't say anything back, even as Diana looked at Sam. When Sam finally reacted, he let out a silent sigh and spoke back. The sound of his voice n negated through the whatever silence engulfed the room. As my body began to collapse, I watched as Diana listened and nodded with a smile before fading into the ground through the dark pentagram. Sam, however, remained there, staring where Diana had been and took in whatever she had said. Upon the demand of my body, I began to make my way towards the bedroom, not wanting Sam to know that I had been eavesdropping. He probably knows, right? I began to make my way back to the room, but I stopped as I heard a sound of whispered voices sneak through the barely open door. So, we're all in agreement? We have to. We don't have any choice anymore. It will be for the better, I'm sure. Indeed. I peeked into the room to see the interior of the library where the four rebel leaders were stood in a circle. Sergeant leaned against the fireplace mantel while Rabbit and Shadow sat into the two empty chairs. They, however, floated to and from to side to side with anxiousness. What were they talking about? I was so engrossed in figuring out what was happening to the room that I didn't notice a figure coming up behind me and pushing me into the, uh, into the room. Uh oh, what the hell is that? Commander, a spy. You that, that fucking asshole with the long, like the complicated name. God damn it! Huh? Human. I grimaced, now out in the open. The force stared at me with cold eyes, as if they were ready to send me back to the human world, as a corpse rather than going through with a siege. I looked up all of them and suddenly rose to my feet, eyeing each leader as I considered running for the door. However, they each looked to me in, in con contemplation. Say, um, you didn't hear anything, did you? No, I swear! What was the last thing you heard? Something of- some- I- so I, I feel like we can't lie because it's not going to work with us, so I'm going to say something about no choice. I, I, I suddenly felt the guard of each leader behind me readying their weapons. What the hell? Were they seriously going to kill me for walking by and eavesdropping? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, guys! I felt the guards back away from me slowly, most likely still cautious of me. I let in a sm small sigh, happy that I wasn't going to die. At least not immediately. Rabbit, however, looked at me with, the ears tw with an ear twitching in curiosity. Let us ask first. Do you know what has been truly happening with Diana? I looked to Rabbit, knowing that what she meant. Diana had been acting oddly, and it was not bonding well. The more I saw her, the more I could tell that something seriously was weighing her down and influencing her words. Yeah, but what does that have to do with this meeting? As, as I answered, the other demons looked to each other before Shadow stepped forward nonchalantly. Let's not play the ignorance game. We're going to assassinate the succubus when the war is over. What the fuck? Why? What? Oh, what the fuck? Way to just blurt it out! There's no use in hiding it. We don't know how much she has heard. What the fuck? Why are you gonna kill- Oh my god. No, we're not doing this, okay? What the fuck? I became massively confused. Why were they going to kill her? How could they- How could they even be going to do it? Why? What good would come out of killing her? Rabbit stood and walked towards the fireplace, staring into the open flame. I could tell that I was about to get an answer, so I listened intently, wanting to know why they were planning Diana's murder. Diana, we fear, has become corrupted. Corrupted? What do you mean? Meaning, she's going batshit crazy like the Demon Lord! No, she's not. She is acting weird, but is she really? I furred my eyebrows that I couldn't- that couldn't be. She seemed mostly fine, saved up for a new instance here and there, except for a few instances here and there. Sergeant, reading my face, pushed himself off the mantle and stood up straight, reminding me of his power with his stance. Human, you hate the Demon Lord as much as we do, correct? I glared at Sir Sergeant's stupid question. Of course I hated him. He trapped me here and forced me- and the ones that I, the one that I love the ones that I love to join this war, there's no reason to even remotely like him. I my glare, face swooped in between me and Sergeant, waving their arms frantically. Listen, we're not trying to make you mad, but well, this is ridiculous. Shadow stood from his seat, now clearly irritated, and stepped towards me. The succubus has gone mad, and if we don't end her life before she takes the throne, then she will become as mad as the demon lord. There is no saving her. Okay, fam, but what about Understand? you guys? If one of you took the throne, so what's to say that you guys won't go crazy as well? Oh, come on, Shadow! Seriously? No, this is beyond unnecessary. All three of you are complicating the matter when all that needs to be stated is the truth. How can that be? How is Diana like the Demon Lord? 
How is Diana mad like the demon lord? None of this made sense. Diana seemed most like mostly mostly right in the head. However, she was strong enough to lead an army and help survive until now. Even aided in the incubi, these weren't actions of a madwoman. Shadow rolled his eyes and went back to his seat as Faye put their hands behind their back, swaying a bit in the air. Well, here's the thing. Here in the demon world, emotions and stuff can be uber powerful. Things like extreme grief or euphoria can even become energies on their own, while other feelings become, well, they can become very, very bad things. Like madness? Yeah. Madness is more than just a head-mind thingy. Here in this world, it's like a leech or a virus. When a demon catches it, Madness just grows and grows until it consumes them, like it did with the demon lord. Taking a new, inf- taking the new information in, I looked to the floor, thinking of the demon lord and how psychotic he was said to have become. He waged wars and apparently enjoyed burning down kingdoms and slaughtering the innocent. It sounds like fucking the Mad King in Game of Thrones, goddammit. If that was how far madness would take the demon, then I feared for anyone who was capable of falling into it. You can become mad in multiple ways. By being born mad or being infected by it. Diana has fought the Demon Lord Head on multiple times during the past ten years. It was inevitable that she would catch the affliction. You catch madness? How is that possible? We don't know, but this wouldn't be the first time someone who used to be sane went mad because they were around another crazy demon. There was an uneasiness in the room. Something told me that none of them believed that there was the true that was the true cause. There's more, isn't there? Huh? If Diana had to die, then there had to be a solid reason. The magic excuse wasn't enough. Why were they planning it if then none of them truly believed it? It's not just because she's mad, isn't it? Something else is wrong. The rebel leaders became silent, letting the letting the tension lay in the air in plain view and giving me my answer. I was right, there was more to the story. That succubus doesn't deserve the throne. But why, Plain dude? and simple. I looked at Sergeant, surprised at his words. As he looked at me, I could see a world of anger behind his eyes. This world needs a real leader on the throne. Not some self-entitled princess who assumes everything is hers just because of her rank in society. You really think that of her? I do. The moment I swore my lines to this rebellion, I watched her. And I don't like what I see. She's emotional, and she has too much power. Nothing about her taking the throne is honorable. But that warrants death? Don't you get it? If we tell her to step down, then the ones who follow her will force her right back in. She's too powerful to be left alive. I grimace. Sergeant had his reasons, but obviously they were noble to him. But I didn't understand. Rabba shook her head and tapping her staff onto the ground. Regardless... We can't have you remembering the conversation we had here, if we are set on stopping her. I took a step back, now afraid. Were they really going to kill me? Faye sensed my fear and waved, the hand, waved their hands wildly. Whoa! Hey, hold on! We're not going to hurt you or anything! Um, that was somehow, that was somewhat a relief, but what were they going to do? As I, took my, as I took a breath, Shadow spoke up, catching my attention. I'm curious, human. Do you believe in the succubus? What? The other re- the other rebel leaders looked to Shadow as he placed a hand on his chin, in thought, and peered into my eyes. Who do you believe should rule this world? The succubus? Or one of us? Okay, well, what the fuck? Okay, and suddenly I became the focal point of the entire war's resolution. Why was my opinion important? I looked to the floor, trying to mull over the- his question and come up with an answer. Diana was sad. Diana had saved my life and was doing everything to make sure that I could go back to the human world as safety as safely as possible. Still, from how she was behaving, something was indeed seriously off with her. Was she really ready to take the throne? The four rebel de- demons before me, however, were all smart and balanced each other out in shape in some shape or form. I could tell that they would all bring peace to the world in some way, but did Diana really have to be eliminated for that to happen? I felt like I was standing on a precipice. I, I, what the fuck? I knew that if I sided with Diana, then she would eventually be eliminated by the four unless she found out beforehand. I could have worn her off, but if these demons erased my memories or threatened my life, I was balancing on the edge of the knife that I had to pick a direction to fall. I closed my eyes and answered Shadow's question. 
Okay, I'm gonna save. I am going to save. The thing is just like, I the only person that I really know around here will like, you know, like somewhat know is Sergeant and Seto. That's it. I don't fucking know Face, Shadow, or Rabbit at all, or what, what they're capable of. Sure, they could be nice demons, but, like, I don't really know them. Same with- same with Sergeant. Like, I just know that, you know, he can be a nice guy. But I don't know what his- his values are, you know what I mean? If you're gonna vote for someone to be, like, to run your country or whatever, you gotta fucking know what they want to do, you know what I mean? And, um, after Diana just fucking poured her heart out, heart out to Sam, Diana has the most, um, liability to, to, for me, personally, because I know her intentions. And I know Seto will follow whatever Diana goes through and whatever, but, like, these four, like, I don't fucking get I don't fucking know. I'm gonna say, what happens if I say I believe in Diana? They're gonna fucking kill me. They're fucking gonna kill me, right? Diana had done so much for us, for me, there was no way I could betray her. The four in the room stared at me, taking in my reply. <laughs> What does a human know? Well, we did ask. Enough. We need to continue this another time. For now... Rabbit lowered her staff and pointed the tip at me, causing me to step back in fear. Et ex memoria de hot loco mentem. At once, I felt my head completely filled with white noise, causing me to grip my head and fall on my knees in pain. Uh... Shut my eyes and felt the world spin around me before I relaxed into silence overtook my senses. My body floated for a bit in an empty void before softly landing on the surface, causing me to open my eyes and look around. Huh? What happened? I was in the hallway of the floor. How did I get there? I was on my way to my room. Weird. I stood up, brushed up myself off, and looked around, hoping that no one saw me snoozing on the floor. When I noted that the when I noted that the coast is clear, I quickly continued to my way to my room. I must have been more tired than I thought. Great, now we can't even tell Diana what the- God damn it. Anyway, I'm gonna end the episode here. This entire thing has been very stressful and very confusing for me at the same time. Everyone is shady as hell, like, Diana's advisors are so shady. Oh my god. Anyway, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know that you guys are enjoying Seduce Me Too, and if you have any predictions, if you haven't seen Sam's root of what's gonna happen, I'm still just like- like, at least Sam is the the Lord of the Dragons or the Father of Dragons. He's a Targaryen. I don't know. He's a dragon now, so that's pretty cool. I I guess I'll just see you guys in the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye.